Good morning, everybody. How's everybody doing? There you go. Good to hear. I'm all right. I'm not bad. Um, <laughs> thanks for asking. Um, I hope you're having a good camp. I hope you're enjoying it. Honestly, like there's going to be lots of things to go to folks, but I always like to thank Greg whenever I can. Greg's awesome. Everybody thanks Greg. <laughs> Work, Work Camp LA is an excellent camp. They do an excellent job every single year. I'm impressed every single time I come. So is everybody like learning stuff? Are you like comatose from learning stuff? Um, I, because, you know, that kind of sucks for me because now it's just going to like, you're like a soaked sponge and nothing else is going to go in. All right, that's okay. We'll still have fun. It's enjoyable. Um, so what did I first, what, what I wish I knew about WordPress when I was first learning. I tried to think of like a good way uh, to kind of encapsulate the, the problem with how you first start off and you learn a whole lot over a long period of time and then you're like, oh man, I wish if I would have done things different from the beginning, I would have... So I thought about that, and I came up with OMG, we can make dinosaurs. Has anybody watched Jurassic Park? <laughs> so I mean, the overall idea is uh, basically they figure out that they can make dinosaurs. Oh my gosh, we can make dinosaurs. That's incredible. It is really incredible. Um, and with WordPress, you're, you're like, oh my gosh, I can do like anything. And that's actually really true. You can do absolutely, if it can be done on the web, you can do it with WordPress. Um, and there are good ways to do it and there are bad ways to do it. Um, and when you end up doing things kind of like in the shortcut way, um, you end up having a dinosaur that might rip your head off. So just because you can do these amazing things, doesn't mean you necessarily should do these amazing things. If that's one thing that Jurassic Park, Park taught us, it's that just because you can doesn't mean you should. Hey, I lost stuff. Oh, this is what happens when you don't plug in your laptop. OK. So object, objective, so this is OMG, I can make dinosaurs. Objectives of this presentation. Courage. Courage to learn. I want to help to give you some resources and, and that this whole presentation is in, intended to give you courage and be like, I can build dinosaurs. That was the speaker music. It was. It's like, let's get going. Um, it's a <laughs> I can build dinosaurs and I'd like to build dinosaurs and I might hit a couple roadblocks, but I'm not going to get my head chopped off. So that, and that's courage, the ability to fail, the ability to learn, the ability to move on and do better. Um, I'm doing a new thing here, so I'm making sure it works. I want to provide some resources um, in order to enable that courage to happen. And just in case you missed it, really, truthfully, I want to make sure that we are getting some courage. That's really the bottom line point, courage. Some of the obvious stuff. You've heard this. I just want to go over it really quickly. When you're first learning WordPress, uh, there's some obvious things that really just, I just want to get out of the way. For example, just don't Google search uh, word, uh, best free WordPress themes. Let's just get that out of the way. Uh, don't install random plugins from when, random websites. Just don't do it. Um, there are really legitimate websites that sell plugins. I know a couple. I kind of work for a couple of them. <laughs> um, but there are other random websites called best free plugins for WordPress.com or things like this. Um, let's just avoid those. That's obvious stuff. And if you don't back something up, don't plan on ever seeing it again. <laughs> These are kind of some of the obvious ones. Um, but let's start talking about the, the major things. One of the things I really wish I would have known from the very beginning was always child theme. That is, like, Say gave a great presentation about, the, about themes just a minute ago. And um, she was talking about child themes. And when you're first starting off in WordPress, it's normal and common and important and helpful and useful and educational to start with a, a parent theme. And a parent theme is basically any theme 
that you can get from WordPress.org or you can buy at ThemeForest or wherever that is a self-standing theme all by itself. That's what a parent theme is. And, but you're going to find re relatively quickly that um, your theme is going to take you so far and then you're going to say, oh, I really want it to do this and that and the other and it's not going to do that quite, so I'm going to make some changes. Um, if you didn't know from the very beginning that the best way to make changes to your theme is with a child theme, uh, then you find yourself in a little bit of trouble at one point because in the end, every single theme, in order for it to be reliable and stable, and this goes for all WordPress.org themes, um, are, are going are to get some updates at some point. And so if you went into your parent theme and went into the parent theme's style.css, file and started adding your custom styles to the site, um, you're like, perfect, like I learned some, something awesome. I know how to do CSS now. Um, that's like an excellent thing and you're patting yourself on your back. I can make dinosaurs. Um, and that's wonderful. And then one day you see the, the oh, your theme has an update. Oh, I love updates. That means somebody's giving me free code to make my site better. I'll do that. Hit the update button. Kablamo! All of a sudden, <laughs> your theme changes are ripped off. They're gone. Say goodbye. Always, always, always child theme. This is, this is why. Um, that's terrible. <laughs> that's like horrific. And that's, what, that's the experience you get. Well, I spent all this time and I learned all this amazing stuff and I made a freaking dinosaur and now it's gone. Um, it's sad. Um, and it's because we didn't know in the first place the child theme. Clear? Yeah. Cool. Child theme resources. Um, the ch child theme is actually relatively straightforward. There's a really great, um, relatively new resource by one of our admins at the Advanced WordPress Facebook group. His name is Ahmad. He's a great front end developer, and he built uh, what's basically called a, uh, he called it underscore child. It is, I don't know if you saw the link. There is a link um, for all these slides. Slides.com slash Matt Cromwell, and you'll find it. Slides.com slash Matt Cromwell, and you'll find it there. And all of these things that are yellow are the actual physical hyperlinks. Um, underscore child is basically a child theme that ha that's done with best practices. It's just a child theme boilerplate, basically. Uh, that works with all the default WordPress themes. And if you are, if you look at that repository, you'll see that there's a branch there um, called, what did he call it in the end? He called it cleanup um, that I actually contributed to. And it's basically a more advanced uh, way of child theming that will let you to override some styles and scripts in your parent theme as well. So the underscore child theme is a great place to start and a great place to learn. Uh, child theme configurator is a really great plugin that basically you, you install the plugin and it will let you to, uh, to choose which theme you want to create a child theme from. You do some simple configuration, hit, hit go, and it creates the child theme for you and activates it for you automatically and you have it right there. Uh, that's a great one. And Say mentioned one earlier as well. Um, and then honestly, whenever you're learning, wanting to make things happen, start with the codex. The codex is excellent. It is um, often or sometimes um, very uh, developer oriented in, the, in its language, in its presentation, but it um, always has the resources that you need. It always is going to explain things very clearly. It's going to have code examples and volunteers all over the world contribute to the WordPress codex. And honestly, I don't think it's said quite often enough. Um, maybe you go to the codex and you're like, oh my goodness, I can't make sense out of this at all. Um, what I always try to help people to understand is that WordPress is a global phenomenon. Like, I can't understate that enough. It's a global phenomenon, and not because it's a great piece of software, but because it's a whole ecosystem that is generated and built by volunteers, uh, by people who want to contribute uh, to you and to me and to see great things happen. And the codex is written by volunteers all over the world. So if you struggle with it a little bit at the beginning, have some patience and keep working through it, and it's a really valuable resource. Next, if you don't have a staging site, you end up cowboy coding, and that is when these things happen. You don't have, uh, basically, protection 
from the wilderness, from, being, from having all of the bad things happen out in the wild. Uh, if you, if you, that, when you think, oh, there's that update button again. I, it's just one plugin. I love that plugin. I'm sure it's great. Hit the update button. Kablam! You got a T-Rex coming right straight through your Jeep. That's no fun at all. <laughs> you don't want that. Um, so staging is a great place to do that. Does anyone really quickly have any questions about staging? Because I know sometimes it can be kind of like a little hump to understand that. Sure. Yes? You can, you can. And install it there and use that as a staging site, is that the same thing? You can. Uh, it's it, it's a, quite a bit of a manual process to make yeah. that happen. Uh, and that's why uh, really good hosts um, yes. actually try to automate that because doing that manual process is, is basically a barrier to doing something that's really best practice. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, but you absolutely can. And here's a couple tools uh, in addition. So for example, when you want a really great staging environment, uh, you can use Media Temple, you can use WP Engine, you can use SiteGround. All of these folks have really great staging environments that are really robust, do a really good job. Um, they're, they'll give you the courage that you need, the protection from the T-Rex that you need. Um, desktop server, like I said, is not literally a staging environment, but you can pull your site down uh, and work on it locally, make those updates locally on your, on your desktop or your laptop. Um, and then when it actually works, um, there are a lot of different ways that you can push it back up. Uh, it's not totally automated right now, but um, there are great ways where you can do that as well. I see a question. Does GoDaddy manage WordPress have staging? Yes, GoDaddy wor uh, managed WordPress also has staging, yep. Um, there's several different tools, um, but it's always going to be more complex than you like. So it's not WP Migrate DB Pro is a really good one for migrating your database from one place to another. Um, but that's just your database. Then if you've made plugin updates, you can maybe you know make those plugin updates first. If everything is safe, you can make those plugin updates first on your live site. After you've tested it on your dev site, you can be like, oh, I know this is going to work. Nothing's going to blow up. Then you can go to your live site, make those updates, and then export the database manually. It's, there, there's always going to be kind of a, a trade-off. But the last, real quick, the last um, other one that I want to mention is called uh, WP Stagecoach. This is a relatively new tool. It's basically a SaaS platform that's going to give you a staging site for your, for, for your site uh, that's actually hosted on their server. So you can um, you, you you install their plugin. You have to pay for their service, which I think it's about twelve bucks a month, um, and you get to basically just hit state go to staging, and it will export your site over to their server, um, and you can do all your updates there. And then it says uh, push live, and then you push all your your uh, staging changes live back to your website. It's a really great service. It's really interesting. I've been using it a lot with our our clients at WordPress in order to troubleshoot. Um, plug-in problems, I say, I really need to do stuff to your site. I don't want to mess up your live site. So do you have staging? They say, no. I say, well, here, why don't you, why don't we do this instead? And it's been really useful for us. Is that service only for staging, and you can do it with any of your websites, wherever they are? Yes. I think the 12, I, you know, I, I have to double check. I'm not sure. I, I think they, they I'm, from the last I looked, I believe, they do it per site and not like per data. Like I don't think they limit it by by the data that you're importing and exporting. Um, and I think at the twelve dollar level, they allow you to do something like ten pushes a month or something like that. Don't quote me. Just look them up. It's really useful. Um, and I know that they are having good conversations with uh, different hosts in order to maybe have these hosts use their service uh, built into their hosting platform. So. Um, I've been talking with those guys a lot because, like I said, we use it for support and I like it. But at the end of the day, if you have one of these other hosts, um, it just makes life a lot easier. Um, yeah, another question. Uh, I just want to let you know, Pantheon also has a, a really good uh, development. Shameless plug, good job. <laughs> I'll, I'll sit in at, at your uh, presentation and talk about GIF. <laughs> 
No, it's true. Pantheon's also excellent. Pantheon's also excellent. Okay, cool. You know, can I get a quick, quick one? You can. I have a blank slide. It's different because the, the staging is built into WordPress. So you go to, it's a WordPress plugin uh, that connects with their service. So you go to like the W, the, I think they just call it staging. The menu item is staging. You go to staging on, in your WordPress site and then it has the options there to push to their server. So you fill it out in your WordPress site. You're not doing anything locally or, or on their server or anything. It, you log into your site, you configure it, it pushes over and then you have to go log in over there, but it emails you all the login information, um, and emails you everything you need. You jump over there, do all your changes over there, and you're st then you go into that um, WordPress admin again, staging, and then there's a button on that side that says push live. You hit the push live, and it goes. So it is very good. It is very intuitive. I would say the desktop server still is really excellent. They're right out there, if, and if you talk to them, they're like the nicest folks in the world. Um, like literally, and they'll help you out whenever you need help. This is amazing. Staging is a hot topic. This, I, I, oh my God, we can build staging. That's what the whole presentation is about. <laughs> Backup Buddy has some great functions as well. I, yeah, in, well, it, yes, yes and no. Yeah, yes and no. Yeah. They, they really are. I can't recommend them enough. Absolutely. All right, moving on. Yay. This is, goes kind of piggybacks on what Say was talking about just a minute ago. Um, when it comes to themes, pretty does not always equal reliable. Um, and this is, this is really kind of, yeah, I know. I wish it, I wish it was true. I really do. Um, because um, what happens is, we, that, this is that, that OMG, I could build dinosaurs moment. You go to theme, you're like, I need a really great website. You go to theme forest and you're like, oh my gosh, this is the theme I've been looking for. It's only $39, I'm done. You download it and then it's just nothing but problems after that. That's not true all the time with theme forest. I don't wanna say that. Theme forest does have excellent themes. It's just hard to know from the demo if it's excellent or not. Um, so that's, the, that's the, the problem there. And it's hard to know from their support because support changes all the time, but they're changing that as well. They're doing some interesting new things there. So keep an eye on them. Um, but at the end of the day, pretty does not always equal reliable. So what I, what I generally encourage uh, new WordPress users to do is stick with whatever's on the WordPress repo. This doesn't sound sexy at all. This doesn't sound awesome because you, you look at the the demos at the WordPress repo are horrid. Um, they are most likely the worst demos that have been created in the history of theme demos, um, unfortunately. Uh, and I believe that that's on the docket to be upgraded as well at some point. But um, oh, this when when laptops try to think for you. Oh, there it is. Yep, so that's what happens. You think it's pretty and cute, and then kablammo. Um, um, yeah, you got spit in your face. That's what happens. Do you remember this scene? This was like the worst scene. He, it's terrible, it's terrible. And that's totally how I felt with this one theme for his theme. I was like, ah! Um, so, oh, I lost my train of thought. I'm talking about themes. You're causing problems. You're probably. No, troublemaker. Yes. In. So, at the end of the day, I recommend working with the WordPress.org themes and child theming them uh, because this is the best way to stay safe and learn a lot. It's the best, let me say it again, it's the best way to have a good, reliable theme and learn a lot in the process. It pays off in the long run. You think that the theme forest way is going to be like a shortcut to make this incredible, amazing thing, and sometimes that's true. Sometimes that happens really well. Um, but if you find uh, a WordPress.org theme that is like mostly what you're looking for, or at least half of what you're looking for, child theme it and learn a lot because 
after you do that two or three times, you, seriously, you do it two or three times, and you have your knowledge of how to theme, how to code, all of that is expanded exponentially. And your updates are better, like it, they, they, they work better with plugins. You're not going to have plugin problems as often as you would with other ones that do crazy fancy things. Um, there's just so many benefits. So it sounds not sexy, uh, but in the long run, it's the best. It's absolutely the best way to go. Was that a question? Um, say it again. I have a 2012 theme that was customized. Oh, no. Um, I don't know where you, is, was it like bestfreethemes.com or, I mean. No, it's WordPress 2012, but it's been customized. So I'm wondering if that's actually a child theme. No, at the end of the day, it's still a parent theme. Okay. So a child theme is actually a, 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 a actual another folder inside uh, your themes folder. So it'll, you'll have 2012, and there's another folder that says 2012 child. And 2012 child will not activate if 2012 is not there. If, if, it does, if it's not in the themes folder, 2012 child cannot work, period. Um, so that, that was a good point of clarification, actually, on child themes. Um, so, and that's why I mentioned the, the plugin for, for, um, for, build, for creating child themes, because um, that kind of automates that whole process for you. Yeah, good, cool. I think I got to jump started again. Here we go. Theme resources. Start child theming themes only from the theme directory, like I said. Then when you want to start getting into, uh, rather, rather than child theming, the uh, after you really have a good grasp of child theming, at some point you're going to want to do your own custom themes. You're going to want to just create your own parent theme, basically, a theme that's not dependent on any other parent theme. You want to create your own custom theme. At that point, I really recommend starting with underscores. It's created by automatic. Tons of volunteers all over the wor world contribute to it. Uh, it's stable, reliable, excellent. Uh, Say mentioned another one earlier. Um, that if you're doing anything with WooCommerce, you should definitely start with um, their um, storefront theme. Uh, you should start with their storefront theme. It is excellent and reliable and stable. It does everything that WooCommerce should do out of the box. And start from that and customize from there. Um, Sage, when you want to really level up um, and start to really do some great uh, development work with themes, I think Sage is, is one of the best ways to go. It's uh, by a team called Roots. Um, the, it's, it's highly recommended. That's basically what we built all of our sites with. Uh, WordPress.com is built with that, and GiveWP is built with that. Um, general purpose themes, if you are basically not ready to start doing your own custom themes but want to get better uh, exposure and experience with really good, stable, reliable themes. Genesis is stable as a rock. It's really good. They do a great job. Uh, it will teach you a ton as you get used to filters and hooks and everything and actions. Uh, it, you'll learn a ton about just doing it right, basically. Um, Woo themes, everything they have really is done the WordPress way. They were bought by Automatic for a reason. They know what they're doing. I uh, can't recommend them enough. This is one that a lot of people haven't heard of, but I, I, I've downloaded their stuff, and it's really good. Array themes is actually really solid uh, stuff. I forgot to mention one. Uh, Say mentioned it earlier. Make is by Theme Foundry. Theme Foundry also does excellent work. They do it right. These are all um, parent themes um, that you should get exposed to. Make is also found on the WordPress repo. It's a free theme. It's, it's called Make. Just look for it. You'll find it. It's a great place to, to learn a lot. Very full featured, one of the most full featured free themes on the repo that there are. I, I promise I'm not looking at my phone. It's supposed to be like <coughs> navigating my, it, it, it's kind of working. Hold on, let me check Facebook. I'm just kidding. <laughs> this, is, this is the part where everybody kind of like glosses over. Um, when you are first learning WordPress, the earlier you can start to learn PHP, the better. Trust me. Don't gloss over. Trust me. The earlier you can start learning PHP, the better. Here's why I like PHP. How many of you are familiar with working with CSS? Good. See? And it's relatively straightforward. You're like, background, make it happen. You're like, float, left, right. This makes sense. You can almost like speak like a sentence, and it makes sense. Guess what? 
That's a lot like PHP. JavaScript, that's a whole nother question. PHP, though, is really a lot like speaking out a sentence. If this happens, do this. That's really a lot of how things are made. Um, sometimes you have to dig a little bit. You have to say, this function is called do this cool thing, and it's going to do x, y, and z. And Well, you got to go look up what x, y, and z actually says. Oh, x says, I want to find these posts, and y says, I want to go um, spit them out in a certain way. Um, so one function is pointing to several other functions. Uh, so sometimes you have to do a little bit, little bit of digging, but when you, to, in order to find out what the PHP is actually saying in a sentence. Um, but once you start digging into it, you will actually learn a ton, and it does actually make a lot of sense. Um, and the truth is, uh, when it comes to WordPress, when it comes to Facebook, Facebook is built on PHP. They, they got fancy and started building their own fun kind of PHP as well. Um, but it's, it's, it, it is the future of the web, as far as we can see right now. Um, so back, think about five, six, ten years ago. Oh, man, I'm dating myself. Um, a long time ago, <laughs> in a galaxy far, far away, um, you know, people were like, HTML. CSS, oh CSS, like I, 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 there we go. I remember when like CSS was like, ooh, can I really do that? Like, does that, yeah, yeah I mean, yeah, the, uh, lots of different languages. Uh, nowadays, HTML, CSS is like, well, if you're gonna do the web, you gotta know these things. Like, you can't pretend to be a WordPress anything if you don't know a little bit of HTML and CSS. It's getting to the point at which that's that's basically the truth with PHP as well. And I don't say that to scare you because. OMG, you can build dinosaurs with PHP, quite literally, and you can. You just have to um, have the courage, which you can do with desktop server and staging and all those other fun things. And if you don't learn PHP, at one point you're going to get stuck, you're going to not be able to do the thing that you want to do, and you're not going to be happy. Right? <laughs> the future is a lot closer than it appears. That thing in the back of the mirror is coming at you quickly, and it will get you. You're going to be overwhelmed by what you don't know. Um, yeah, question. Well, OK, so you, you, you favor the PHP over JavaScript. So yeah. can, you, can you do what you do with PHP with JavaScript? No, I don't favor one over the other. Um, yeah, yeah. There, uh, thank you. Uh, he said, do I favor one over the other? Do I favor, um, can you do certain things without the other? Um, they actually have two totally different purposes. Okay. They, and you they have, both. and you have you to, you, you do have to have both. Um, I recommend PHP because it has a lot lower barrier of entry uh, for for learning. Once you start learning PHP, it'll get easier to learn JavaScript. Honestly, even though they have totally different purposes. And just super briefly, um, PHP is basically a server language. It's what needs to happen on the server side, like with your host. On it's in the back end. Um, WordPress kind of blurs these lines a little bit between what is front end and back end a little bit. But regardless, PHP is a server language. And JavaScript is, they call it client side. Um, but it's what happens in your browser. So PHP is going to spit out all of the stuff that, that your database and your server needs in order to populate the page. And then JavaScript is in the browser, and it's going to do fancy stuff there. So um, again, back a long time. Back a long time ago, um, in a galaxy far, far away, everybody thought JavaScript was a security issue. Um, and so whether or not a browser would actually have JavaScript enabled was not totally reliable. So people did not want to rely on JavaScript in order to output content in any way or do something with your content in any way. But that's not the case anymore. Uh, JavaScript is universally accepted as part of the browser nowadays. Uh, a couple uh, PHP resources, again, the codex. Every single codex article you'll read that has to do with something is going to have examples of PHP in it. They're going to have physical PHP code examples. And you can read them. You can really read them. Um, there's a, a great developer named Carl Alexander. He says, don't learn by coding. Learn by reading code. That's what he says. The more code I read, the more I learn. Um, and I, I think that's absolutely true. You can go scan through the codex and just read the code, almost like a sentence. Code Academy has a great 
free PHP course. Um, these courses are great. I like, I like these free resources because they're free and they are good. They're not WordPress uh, specific. Uh, so the codex is going to give you a lot more specific WordPress uh, PHP knowledge. And then Zend is another great resource for a lot of things, but they also have a PHP resource that, that, is, that is also good and useful. Cool. Yep. OK, next one. Online learning in general. When you're first wor working on WordPress, if you stumble across an issue or a problem whatsoever, uh, you can figure it out. You absolutely can figure it out. Um, you need to know it from the very beginning. If you get to a WordPress problem and you think, oh, I need a developer now, um, or oh, I need to ask somebody to help me with this right now, that's not true. I want to give you the courage to know now it's not true. Um, you can learn everything there is to learn about WordPress. You really literally can learn it online. You really literally can Google it and find the answer. Um, Basically, if you're like, I have Google, I have this problem with blah, 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 blah. You're not necessarily going to find like, there's not going to be a silver bullet answer. It's not going to be your exact problem is answered in one article. Break the problem up into little pieces, and you will get uh, the little pieces, and you'll put the pieces together. Um, it's amazing to me the giant mass of knowledge that the entire internet is. And it can't be understated uh, how much learning you can do simply by just looking around and finding things. Because the truth is, if you don't, it's going to find you. It's going to become a problem. Again, they're going to be looking for you. You don't know how to do something, but you, you, you don't really have an excuse anymore. You can find it. You can answer it. Um, you can do it, slides. There we go. Some great online resources. Uh, the Advanced WordPress Facebook group that Devin and I are admins of, and we have 25 other admins actually because it's a 16,000 member group and growing. Um, it's a great resource. I honestly have learned a giant amount of my own knowledge directly from the people in that group. Um, it, it's, I can't say enough positive things about it. Um, talk to me later, I could tell you some negative things, but I love that group. <laughs> it's excellent. WP Beginner, WP Beginner is also an excellent resource. Don't be put off by the beginner nomenclature. It is also kind of more like an intermediate to mildly advanced resource as well. They have some great PHP resources at WP Beginner. They have great tutorials that really walk you through things. They recommend really reliable plugins and, and do a really good job overall. Website Training Wheels is uh, done by uh, Lucy Beer, who unfortunately isn't here. I really wanted to give her a shout out. Uh, Christina Hills is right over there. Everybody talk to Christina later because she can help you in a lot of ways. Uh, if you have clients who really need a lot of hand holding, Christina is a professional hand holder. Um, <laughs> amen. Preach it. She's really good. And honestly, it takes a special kind of patience to be that kind of person, and she does a really good job at it. Last thing I want to just last things I want to recommend. There's, these are two plugins that really help a lot because you know you've heard it a lot of times. Uh, for example, that if you're going to do some custom CSS, um, you don't want to necessarily that, that that applies to a specific plugin. Uh, you don't want to necessarily do that in your theme because as soon as you switch a theme, then that custom customization is gone. Modular custom CSS is an excellent tool for doing plugin specific CSS. Um, customizations. And what I love about it is it's built directly into the customizer. So there's a little box in the customizer that it adds um, that, bas that basically gives you a place where you can put your custom CSS. And what it does is it automatically live reloads your screen right there with your customized CSS. It's a great way to learn CSS. It's a great way to apply your CSS straight, straight to the site with live reload. It's instantaneous. It's a really great tool. Um, the other one is also the same mentioned earlier about being able to have the courage to add custom functions to your site. Um, and y if you talk with me uh, uh, through Give or through any of our plugins, I'll say you need this piece of code um, in order to do the customization that you're looking for. And the question I get so often is, okay, where do I put this piece of code? 
Uh, well, the I'm trying to get it back. The um, I might have just lost my battery. It's all right. Luckily, I have everything memorized. Um, I'll say you need to put this into your um, it, it, into a custom plugin. Nobody knows how to do that, of course, um, and that's totally normal and fine. Uh, you'll get there eventually. Um, but what my custom functions does is it basically is a custom functionality plugin. So you install this plugin, and it gives you a, a code editor in the back where you can put any of these small code snippets into and hit activate, and it will be applied to your site. But here's the great thing about it. Um, let's say you put in a custom function uh, into your... Uh, Battery. Oh, oh thanks. Yeah. Um, I, I'm almost wrapped up anyway. Yeah, that was the last slide. Um, I'll take that. Thank you. I'm just um, <laughs> Let's say you add a function into that, into, into that field, you hit go, and then kablooey, there goes your site. The dinosaur rips you off the toilet. Um, that's no fun for anybody. This, this plugin actually um, protects you from that. It checks to see if there's a fatal error in your function, and it will say, oh, nope, I'm not going to apply that because that's going to give you a white screen of death and nobody wants that. Even in your staging site, you don't want that. So uh, that, it's a great tool for that purpose exactly. So those two tools, the custom modular CSS and the My Custom Functions are there to make it a little bit easier for you to get into doing custom functions, into custom CSS, to do it in a safe way that's reliable, enjoyable, and everybody has fun. That's all I got. Do we have time? I can take two questions. Unless one question takes 20 minutes, but I can take two questions. Yes? Uh, when you're talking about themes, I, I wonder if you have any uh, experience or knowledge of elegant themes, Divi, that kind of locks in the community that you don't have any problem with that? Or? Um, I have lots of experience with it, and I'd love to say everything I actually think about it later. Okay. <laughs> Another question. Can I share a comment about sure. JavaScript? Is that JavaScript is really going through a renaissance. Yep. Everybody needs it. It deals with the front end. All the action is there. There's nothing wrong with JavaScript other than abuses that people have done to it. But the standard, International Standard Committee is going to release uh, ES6 or ECMAScript 6 for ES 2016 very soon. A lot of things have been resolved and new stuff has been added. A lot of action is going on right now in front end. Yep. And you need JavaScript. Yep, absolutely. You need to learn. Yeah, I, I don't mean to, he's, he basically he was saying that JavaScript is also a big requirement for doing uh, development with WordPress. I totally agree. Um, I don't, don't mean to emphasize PHP at the expense of JavaScript at all. Um, it's, yes, you need them both. Um, it's just easier to get into PHP. So start there and then move in. I th I, I, that's my experience, at least, that I understood JavaScript a lot better after I had a better handle of PHP. Um, but they are two very different things. Cool. Thank you so much. Yay.